What's the difference between a beekeeper and a bee haver? Have you heard people talking about being a bee haver? What's that all about? It's crazy talk, isn't it? They'll say, oh, he's not a beekeeper. He's a bee haver. What does that even mean to be a bee haver? Well, today I'm going to break it down. I'm going to break down the difference between a beekeeper and a bee haver. And be sure to watch until the end of this video because I'm giving three tips on how you can go from being a bee haver to being a beekeeper if that's where you're stuck. So let's get started. Being a beekeeper means you're learning, you're inspecting your hive regularly, you're taking care of it, you're looking for pests and diseases, and you're testing for problems and solving problems as they come up. But being a bee haver, it's not really a word. After all, it's just something that we make up to refer to a type of beekeeper. It refers to someone who basically bought some bees and they dumped them in a hive and they're hoping that in a few months without doing anything at all or even thinking about their bees, they can go out there and just turn a crank and that beautiful gold honey will just find its way into a jar. That's right, they really do nothing at all. They do very little to keep their bees healthy. And if they do something once in a while, usually they don't know what they're doing. They do the wrong things at the wrong time. Now, both the beekeeper and the bee haver, ironically, can sometimes have the same results. Both can lose their colonies or both could have very strong colonies that are producing a lot of honey. Let's face it, everybody gets lucky. And everybody gets unlucky. The thing to remember about bees is that luck is not always going to win out. The bee haver will lose their bees usually their first year in beekeeping, where the beekeeper can usually expect to keep their bees living for several years following good practice management styles. Now I'm going to share three differences between a beekeeper and a bee haver, and I'm hoping by doing this it's going to help you to choose to be a beekeeper. Number one is all about study. Now, a bee haver usually is somebody who has no interest in studying or learning more about bees. They put little time into understanding how to manage their bees. But a true beekeeper, they really do want to learn more. They're eager to learn to be a good steward of their new bees. They're proud of their new bees. They implement the best management practices to keep their bees healthy, strong, and growing. But a bee haver may choose not to take a beekeeping class, but a true beekeeper may even take several classes and read lots of books learning how to manage their colonies. Now here's what the mindset of a bee haver usually is. Now I know what I'm doing. I ain't paying no attention to some worthless class taught by some ivory tower educator. My grandpa kept bees and he never had any schooling at all. Besides, bees got along fine before stupid classes were around. Now bees are facing many new challenges that were not around when grandpa kept bees. It was a bit easier for grandpa. Let me give you some examples. Like the Varroa Destructor came into our country only as recently as 1987. The Trachea Mite came into the U.S. in 1990. Small High Beetle, 1996. Right off the bat, three big hitters that are really hard for beekeepers today to manage unless they're well educated. They have to really work harder today as beekeepers to manage. It was easier for grandpa, but managing colonies against these pests really does require being well educated first. Now, the reason for starting beekeeping is different between the bee haver and the beekeeper. Beekeepers want to start beekeeping to learn about bees and the important roles that they play in pollination and helping our gardens and our fruit trees and provide the vegetables that we love to eat so much. We want to help bees survive the challenges they face as beekeepers. Whereas a bee haver, eh, they may only want bees just for the honey or just for a tax write-off, or just be the next millionaire beekeeper pollinating almonds in California. But management is where we see the big differences between a beekeeper and a bee haver. A beekeeper enjoys and loves their bees. A bee haver tolerates their bees. 
A beekeeper manages and specs and keeps their bees strong and healthy, but a bee haver just kind of observes their hives from a distance. A beekeeper monitors their queen's laying pattern, and they check two or three times a month for swarm cells or the need to add extra boxes for expansion and for pests and diseases. A bee haver eh, rarely checks. And when they do, they're not well-versed enough and educated enough about bees to really know what they see and what they do see, they really don't know what to do next. A beekeeper will test for mites every 21 to 30 days and take action if their mite counts are beyond tolerant thresholds. A bee haver kind of feels like, eh, my bees don't have mites. They're healthy bees. I bought it from a, a cool supplier. <laughs> A bee haver becomes frustrated because they say, my bees didn't make any honey, they became diseased or they died, and I don't know why they died. That's how you can tell a difference between a bee haver and a beekeeper. A bee haver will say, why did my bees die? A beekeeper usually is sharp enough to know, I think my bees died from viruses, from mites. I think my bees died because I had a queen problem. Now, if you've been a bee haver, do not despair. I get it. There's been times with my hives, I've had some hives that I've just halved. <laughs> I mean, I just couldn't get out there because of my schedule and do the things that I needed to do. Not proud of the fact that it happened, but it happens. Life gets in the way. It's okay. But I'm going to give you three ways now to change that. Ways that you can become a beekeeper if you've fallen into being a bee haver. Make a commitment right now to invest some time. Your bees need you. Try to go out to your hives every two weeks and take action based upon the results of your two-week inspection. Secondly, buy good equipment. Use equipment can harbor diseases. Even some new equipment from the wrong source could be measured wrong, built wrong, or be poorly built equipment. Beekeeping isn't cheap. Finally, take an online beekeeping course. A course should take several hours, not just a 30-minute presentation on bees, at a garden center, at a big box store. Now, I want you to take a look at this next video. It's short, sweet, and simple. It'll help you learn how to get started in bees this next spring. Take a look.